So we have completed the first form in the series, which was importing our data into the data import table. And now we're in the next form of the series, and we're going to transfer our ozone data from the import table into the verification table. And the verification table is the middle table in the series. It's between the import table and the archive table. So the first thing you'll notice is step D is actually not a button. So we just need to select the site ID and the sampler ID. So the site ID is S46 because that's where my ozone monitor is located. So I click on S46 and when I do that, there's going to be sampler IDs in this empty box. So it's going to populate that box when I click on site S46. So now I need to select what sampler and the ozone sampler is IN03. Just a note here that if you have your new import text file and it has multiple pollutants in it, for example, you have a data logger and the data logger logs your ozone data, your PM2.5 data, your MET data all together in the same text file, just remember you have to do one pollutant at a time. So you have to complete the entire import process for ozone, then go back through the steps and do PM2.5, then go back through the steps and do meteorological data. In my particular example, I only have ozone data in my file. The next thing I need to do is I need to tell the toolbox how to copy the data from the data import table into the data verification table. Remember that the data import table is basically same, it's the same as the new import text file and it's got the same column names as that file. So everyone that uses the, the toolbox has a different new import text file with different columns names. So we need to tell the toolbox what each of the columns represent. The way we do that is by assigning the columns in the data import table to the preset columns in the data verification table. And also note that columns and fields are the same thing. So if I say fields, I'm actually talking about columns. And if I say columns, I'm talking about fields. I use the two terms interchangeably. How we do this, what I call field mapping step, is we click on the E, the setup transfer to data verification button. So let's click on that and see what happens. So that brings up this screen. And what this is, it's a query in Design View. There are two panes in this query, and that's the top pane here that stops right here. So this gray area and this box here, and this is the data import table, and it shows the columns in the table. This bottom pane currently just looks like a blank table, but it's what it's formally called is the query design grid. And so what I need to do is map the columns in the data import table, which is here, to the data verification table using this grid. And I'm going to demonstrate how to do that. Once you get this down, it's pretty easy. First thing I need to do is pull these columns from the data import table down into the query design grid. So I need to select every column in the data import table. So the first thing I do is click on the first column and that is the column below the asterisk. And in my situation, that is the date column. In your situation, it might be a different column. It's just the one that's always immediately following the asterisk. So I'm gonna click on that date. And then you need to click on the last one in the list. And in your case, you might have to scroll down. There might be a vertical scroll, scroll bar here if you have more fields and you would scroll down to it. But what you need to do is that on the last field, you need to shift click. And what I mean by that is hold down your shift key on your keyboard at the same time you left click on your mouse. And that is going to highlight all of the fields. So shift and then click. And I can see that now all of my fields are highlighted. To get my fields into the blank query design grid area, I need to drag them in. 
I click anywhere in this highlighted area and drag. So click and drag on your mouse. Oh, see what happened? I clicked instead of clicking and dragging. So I just need to go this, do this again. So I shift click on the last one to get these all highlighted. That's okay. Everyone has these things happen to them and it's perfectly fine. And now click and hold the mouse key and drag it in. And you want to drag it into the first column in this blank area. And then when it's in there, you release your mouse key. And now the fields are in what used to be the blank query design grid. And notice when I release the mouse, that each of the headers spread out one per column in this design grid area. So the next thing we want to focus on is this append to row. So what the append to row represents is the columns in the data verification table. And these are the columns that your data are going to be copied into. So for the date field and the time field, the toolbox guessed that they should be copied into the date and time field of the verification table. The only reason the toolbox guesses this is because the column names in the data import table and in the data ver verification table were the same. When the toolbox makes these guesses, you should verify that it made the correct guesses. For example, does the date field really contain the dates or does it contain both the dates and the time? I'm just going to make sure that there are actually dates in there and times in the time column. So I'm just going to open my new import.txt file just, just to check it really quick. So yeah, my dates are in one column and my times are in the other column. So in this case, the toolbox correctly guessed this. So I can close that and minimize this. And you'll notice the append to row is blank for this concentration field. So if I don't assign anything to this append to row, then the toolbox is not going to move my concentration data from my import table into my verification table. So you definitely want to assign a field in the append to row for concentration. That's very important because otherwise we're not going to have any concentration data in the toolbox. So to do that, click in the append to row that's blank for that column. Now you'll see I got this drop down arrow on the right side of the screen. So I'm going to click on that and I am going to find the concentration field in the verification table. So this shows all of the fields in the verification table and I need to tell it what field to take this concentration from the import table and put it into the verification table. So I need to find the concentration field and notice there is a scroll bar here. It, there is many fields here so you can scroll through them if you're not seeing what you need. But in my case I don't need to use the scroll bar and I can just click on the concentration field to select it. Now there were only three fields or columns in my data import table and all three of those columns have been correctly mapped to the columns in the data verification table. It was easy, right? Note that in my example, I only had to map one field, but when you import your data, you might need to map more fields. So the append to row for you might be blank for more of your fields. You just complete the mapping process one column at a time until all of your columns that you need to copy from the data import table to the very to the data verification table are mapped. Also note that if you had multiple concentrations, so for example, you had a concentration value for your ozone data, a concentration column for your PM 2.5 data, a concentration column for your CO data. If you had all of those concentration values in the same text file, you would see those fields. So for example, you'd see concentration, ozone, concentration, PM 2.5, concentration, CO, but you would only be mapping to the import that you are currently working on. So if you were currently working on ozone, you would only map the, the ozone concentration to the concentration field in the verification table. The other ones you would leave blank. And by leaving the append to row blank for those other concentrations, 
they wouldn't be moved into the verification table. Also note that there might be some columns in the data import table that you don't want to move to the verification table. For example, perhaps there's a whole bunch of extraneous data in your data import that you don't need to have in the verification table. And if that's the case, you would just also leave the append to row blank for those columns. And if there's any, any question at all on how to do your field mapping, please do not hesitate to call your instructors because we're here to help you. So since I've completed my field mapping, I'm just going to do a quick check to make sure I did it correctly. Date to date, time to time, concentration to concentration looks good. And then all I need to do is save this. So to save it, I go to file and then save. And now I can close the query design grid. And remember, when you're closing a table or a query, you want to use this bottom X and not the top X that will completely close the toolbox. So I click on the bottom X to close this query. And now I am back on the transfer to verification table form and I've now completed step E. I'm ready to move down to step F, which is to transfer to the data verification table from the data import. Also note that once you set up your field mapping, that yeah, unless something changes about your text file that you get off your sampler, you don't have to map again. So when I go back in and import another ozone file, I would just click on this, this button and it would already show the field mapping. And all I would need to do is confirm that the fields were correctly mapped. And I am going to click on the step F, transfer to data verification from data import button. And what this does is it copies the data into the fields I told it to. So it's going to copy the data from the data import table into the data verification table based on that field mapping step. So let's click on that button. And you're going to start getting real familiar with these message boxes because they come out throughout using these forms. Don't be scared by them. They're just telling you important information. Just read through them. And what it's saying is it's about to run an append query. What an append query means is it's going to add records to the table. So go ahead and click yes. That's what you want it to do. And it says I'm about to append 336 rows. What you want to do here is verify in your database logbook that the numbers match. So I check in my database logbook and yeah, there were 336 records in my new import text file. So that's okay. And I click on the yes button. And that completed the transfer of the data from the data import table to the data verification table. The next step is step G, which is to inspect the data verification table and make sure the transfer was successful. So I click on the G button here and see what happens. And this brings up the data verification table. And you'll notice in the data verification table that many of the fields are blank. And in fact, the only columns that are filled in are the ones you map to. So the date, we map that, we map the time, and we map the concentration. And those are the columns that are filled in by the toolbox. And that's what we want to see. But I would recommend scrolling through the data, making sure there's not any blank rows or anything else weird like symbols in your data or something unusual like that. So I'm going to scroll through this real quick and make sure it all looks good. And it does. And as we work through the other forms and the other buttons, some of these other fields are going to get filled in by the toolbox. So when you see this table again, it's going to look different because some of these other fields are going to be filled in. So I'm going to click on this X button to close the verification table, the lower X. And we're back in our form. And the next step is step H, update site ID and sampler ID. And when I click on that button, the toolbox is going to begin filling in some of those columns that were empty in the verification table. So this time it says you're about to write an update query. And what that means, an update query is going to, going to change existing data or fill in blank fields. And that's what you wanted to do. So click yes. 
And again, we want to verify in our database logbook that this number matches the number in our new import.txt file. 336 is correct, so I click yes. And now I'm kind of curious on what that did. And remember that these buttons that are gray are multi-use buttons, so you can click on them again as many times as you want during the import process. So let's take a look at what the toolbox did. Oh wow! So now a bunch of these fields that were blank before are filled in. So that's cool. That's a good thing to see. So I can just close the table by clicking on this X button and continue with this import process. As I can see here, the next step is the View Dates and Times button. So I click on the View Dates and Times button and see what happens. And what this does is it orders my data, if it wasn't already, in ascending order of date and time values. This is a good time to verify the start time of the data set and the end time of the data set match what is in your database logbook. So I'm going to do that. So 8-8-2013 at 9 o'clock, I check in my data logbook, and that is correct. That's what I had. And if I use this vertical scroll bar, I can see the last date and time in this file is 8-22 at 8 in the morning. And that also matches what I have in my database logbook. So I can go ahead and close this table by clicking on this X, the lower X. Notice that the next button on this form, the header for this button says potential dates and time corrections. So this is a button that you might not need to press for your data. In fact, most of the time you won't have to press this button. We're going to talk about this a little bit. So. This button is only used when importing a file logged with a data logger or from a sampler that records values with end times of the measurement period instead of the beginning times. And this is unusual, but we have seen it very frequently with TOMs. So when you import a new import text file into the toolbox, the toolbox treats the times in the files as start times unless you tell it otherwise. So for example, the first date time in this file is 8-8-2013 at 9. The toolbox assumes that the sampling began at 9 a.m. and ended at 10 a.m. because the toolbox assumes that 9 a.m. is the start time. In this case, that's not correct because the dates and times in my new import text file for ozone are sampling end times. That's according to my sampler manual and is also what I wrote in my database logbook. So that means that the row with the date of 8-8-2013 and time of 9 o'clock shows data that was gathered from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. So I do need to click on this button. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this button. And it says this step should only be completed if the times in the text file you imported are sampling end times instead of tar start times and it should only be run once per import. So it gives me a chance to cancel out if I didn't mean to press this button, but I totally meant to press this button, so I'm gonna click OK. And then it tells me it's about to run an update query, so I click yes on that because I do want to make this update. And 336 rows matches my database logbook for the number of records in this file, so I click yes and it does what it needed to do. So I'm curious what it did. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the View Dates and Times button to see what it did. And now I notice that it has converted that first time from nine o'clock to eight o'clock. And that's what I wanted it to do. So I'm gonna just write down in my database logbook that I performed this correction just in case I forget what I'm doing and accidentally do it again or I get distracted. So I'm just going to write down in my database logbook that I made the end time to start time correction and that 336 records were corrected. And I'm going to close this query by clicking on the lower X button. And now I've got two options. On the bottom of the form I have two buttons. It says continue to import and qualify pollutant concentrations or continue to import and qualify MET data. And since I'm wor currently working with my ozone data, Data, I want to click on this first button here. That's the pollutant concentrations button. And by doing that, I'm going to tell that that tells the toolbox that I'm done working with this form and I'm ready to go to the next form. And in the next form, we're going to transfer the data from the verification table to the archive table where it will live permanently. 
So I'll click on this button to open that next form.